summer movie trailers are starting to trickle in, not to mention the huge proliferation of set leaks on the internet. So I thought this would be the perfect time to take a look at the summer movies of 2013. And while the summer movie season has become so crowded it's spilling over as far as March, we're going to stick with tradition here and start in May. So without further ado, let's take a look at what movies and studios look to dominate next summer. In what's becoming a tradition, Marvel once again kicks off the summer with Iron Man 3, hitting theaters on May 3rd. Once again, Marvel and DC will be going head-to-head -head at the box office this summer, competing not just for dollars, but bragging rights. Marvel likes its odds, though, as Robert Downey Jr. is not only coming off of two Iron Man movies, but The Avengers, where he was arguably the star. Add to that new blood behind the camera with Lethal Weapon's Shane Black, and the summer movie season should be off to a very nice start. Now the very next weekend, we'll finally get to see The Great Gatsby, as Baz Luhrmann's extravagant 3D period piece was pushed back because star Leonardo DiCaprio couldn't do Oscar campaigns for both this flick and Django Unchained. It will be interesting to see how Gatsby fares against the new romantic comedy from Richard Curtis, the brains behind a slew of uber-successful rom-coms like Love Actually, Notting Hill, and Bridget Jones's Diary. The flick stars Rachel McAdams, who is also a rom-com powerhouse, and basically seems to be a more upbeat British version of her earlier The Time Traveler's wife. Also that weekend, Tyler Perry will release We the Peoples, and while he's usually a box office wild card, this flick only bears his name as he does not star or work behind the camera. Can his brand run on auto control? We'll find out. Then the very next weekend sees the long-awaited sequel Star Trek Into Darkness, which Paramount is betting on heavily, even persuading Helmer J.J. Abrams to do the film in 3D so it's more competitive at the box office. Hey, even The Great Gatsby is in 3D. But it will be hard for Star Trek Into Darkness to engage warp drive at the box office, as the very next weekend it'll run smack into Fast and Furious 6, The Hangover Part 3, and Epic, Fox Animation's modern-day answer to Ferngully. Now you'd think one of these flicks would move, but where? As you're about to see, summer 2013 offers Hollywood Fair the least breathing room yet. The first weekend in June sees another comedy go head-to-head -head with an action flick, as After Earth competes with The Internship. After Earth looks to earn box office redemption for both M. Night Shyamalan and Will Smith, plus features Smith's secret weapon, his son. Yes, Jaden Smith makes his long-awaited follow-up to the immensely successful Karate Kid reboot, and seems to have done some growing up. Will he be able to join his pal Justin Bieber in the teen heartthrob zone? As for the internship, Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn seek to recapture their wedding crashers' magic under the direction of Sean Levy, who's trying to move into more adult territory after Real Steel and the Night at the Museum movies. Also, that same weekend, we could be looking at a sleeper hit, as Mark Ruffalo, Jesse Eisenberg, Michael Caine, Morgan Freeman, and more star in Now You See Me, a thriller about magicians who also happen to rob banks and are hunted by the FBI. But perhaps the strangest matchup of the summer takes place the next weekend, as Warner Brothers' Man of Steel goes up against the new Seth Rogen comedy, The End of the World. In the flick, stars like Emma Watson, James Franco, and Jonah Hill play themselves, suddenly facing the apocalypse. Such a high-concept, out-of-the-box idea could potentially be kryptonite to Man of Steel, where Warner Brothers desperately needs a win. Further showing a vote of no confidence, other studios aren't even giving Man of Steel a wide berth, as the very next weekend both Monsters University and World War Z open. But word of mouth on World War Z is pretty awful, and we'll see if Pixar continues to have luck in the sequel department. Then Kick-Ass 2 bursts onto the scene, but faces some strong competition of its own. Action guru Roland Emmerich offers up perhaps the most inventive casting of the summer in White House Down, where Secret Service agent Channing Tatum must protect President Jamie Foxx from a paramilitary group that's taken over the White House. Tatum, who is slowly but surely dominating movie genres one by one, will make his action debut here. Uh, yeah, G.I. Joe was in the farce category. Besides the first weekend in May, the other big summer release date is 4th of July weekend. And while last year The Amazing Spider-Man had it all to itself, this year Disney's The Lone Ranger is being forced to share. Not only is Despicable Me 2 hitting theaters with the addition of Al Pacino as Groot's new nemesis, but Will Smith once again stakes his claim on the holiday weekend with the re-release of Independence Day in 3D. Expect Fox to promote it heavily as word is they're testing the waters for a sequel. Then the next weekend, Adam Sandler returns with a sequel to his surprisingly popular Grown Ups. And he's pushed his stunt casting into overdrive as Grown Ups 2 features both Shaquille O'Neal and Arnold Schwarzenegger's son, Patrick. We'll also see the debut of Pacific Rim from Guillermo del Toro, where the studio, like Paramount did with J.J. Abrams, has forced him to convert it into 3D. With its biggest stars being Idris Elba and Charlie Day, Pacific Rim soldiers will find themselves fighting box office monsters as well. Then finally we get a bit of a break as two lesser-known commodities enter the fray. 
First is RIPD, which is like Beetlejuice meets Men in Black, where a killed policeman joins an undead police force. Based on the Dark Horse comic and produced by the publisher, it's too bad that Ryan Reynolds is no longer the up-and-coming star he was when they cast him in the lead. In fact, once upon a time, so many studios were eager to sign Reynolds that he'll now find himself competing against himself at the box office. DreamWorks Animation will release Turbo opposite R.I.P.D., where Reynolds voices a snail who wants to become a big-time racer. This car's homage seems to skew very kitty instead of the all-ages appeal needed to dominate the box office, but we'll see. Then July wraps up with two huge juggernauts. Not only does Hugh Jackman return as the Wolverine, but Phineas and Ferb finally make it to the big screen. The latter is such a strong brand, and X-Men Origins Wolverine was so poorly received that Agent Perry could very well end up besting the mutant at the box office. Finally, we have August, where studios roll the dice with less surefire bets. Right off the bat, we have a bit of a bottleneck with the Smurfs 2, Red 2, and 300 Rise of an Empire all coming out the same weekend. It could be anyone's game, as all initially fared well with audiences, yet there's no telling if that interest will carry over to a sequel or a prequel. Then the next weekend, after losing big with their Total Recall remake, Sony is going to try again anyway with Robocop. So far, though, the other studios must feel this flick has a shot, as no movies are set to open opposite. Next up, Percy Jackson takes another shot at establishing a franchise that can compete with Harry Potter, but will have a tough time going up against the Denzel Washington, Mark Wahlberg comic book adaptation Two Guns. What's more, the very next weekend, another popular series of novels, The Mortal Instruments, will try to make the leap to the silver screen, with Lily Collins, Kevin Zeigers, Jonathan Rhys Myers, and Lita Hetty starring. We'll also get your typical end-of-summer horror flick, but considering that Your Next has been sitting in the can for two years, Lionsgate shouldn't expect much. Finally, the Weinstein Company tries once again to gain a foothold in the animation genre, with something called Leo the Lion, about a lion who's a vegetarian. Nothing has been released about the film yet, but it's a mystery how the normally shrewd Harvey Weinstein could think flicks like Hoodwinked and its sequel can compete with what Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks Animation, Illumination Entertainment, and now Sony Animation are releasing. So that's the Summer 2013 Movie Roundup. What movie are you the most excited to see? And what flick did you just learn about here? Be sure to write your thoughts down below. I'm Grace Randolph, and this has been a Movie Bite. You can watch more right now.